Welcome to Rule of Thirds, a program on the Screen Refresh Network, where our goal every episode is to select a different topic and create a memorable list of our choices. You're welcome to shoot us a message on Instagram, X slash Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email to screenrefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three are, or even to suggest future topics. For this episode, I'm your host, Pound Sign, and I'm joined by the rest of the Screen Refresh crew, host, host. Our topic today is covering our most memorable topic. Hello there. I just realized you're reading all of this intro <laughs> verbatim. <laughs> Dean's gone full robot. We could just map the audio into all of those placeholder segments, right? Well, Dean or Tim, you've been wanting the AI to take over. So this is our first uh, AI episode. <laughs> For this episode, I'm your host, Dean, and I'm joined by the rest of our Screen Refresh crew, Tim, Nick, and David. Hey, guys. Hey. hello. Hey, hey, say hello. Say hello. <laughs> our topic today is covering uh, some Easter eggs that we want to talk about since, you know, the holiday that has already happened. Yeah, this will be three weeks late. It's over. <laughs> Better late than never, but for us, it's over. But for us, we're in the we're in the past, and it hasn't happened yet. So, Dean, what constitutes an Easter egg for our dear listeners? Easter eggs are little fun, little visual gags or references. Uh, usually, it's referencing um, something else or some other IP. Or a joke, like embedded within the movie, for instance. Well, I, I mean, there's like 80 million out there. I can't say the same ones you guys are going to choose, right? So Ready Player One is completely off the table. Okay. <laughs> or most Marvel, I guess, right? <laughs> well, Ready Player One has like a thousand and one Easter eggs in it. Oh, that's, that's true. Whole, oh, that's yeah. That's basically the whole movie. movie. Exactly, right. Yeah. Well, I was going to give an example, then I was like, oh, what if I say the same as somebody else? But there's thousands of Easter eggs. <laughs> But if we've all looked at the same Easter egg <laughs> aggregates online, just to get an idea, we might say the same ones. It's really, there really is like so many. This was really hard to like just decide. And so many of them are like tiny, like are yeah. barely. I mean, like, usually they noticeable. are. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, I guess that's why I, it's an Easter egg. I think it's <laughs> tough, like differentiating from what things are Easter eggs truly and what things are just like little references or nods within the film it's like if you take the movie us like the number 11 11 like appears throughout the film because it ties to a biblical verse and it's like okay it's a little thing that if you notice it it's fun but is it an easter egg or is it just part of the plot mm. no an easter egg would be um a a113 i think in pixar because that's the caltech room number where a lot of those animators got their start Right, and it's yeah, present that's in every egg. single. It's yes. present in every single Pixar movie. The eleven eleven thing, I didn't even catch that, but that's less of an Easter egg, and that's more of just like subtle plot thing. I yeah, it's say. more of a what you call a motif. Like I, I kept seeing uh, in the Godfather referenced as like they'll show an orange, a piece of fruit, like whenever somebody's about to die or something bad's about to happen. But that's more of a motif than like an Easter egg. It's not referencing yeah. anything. Um outside of the movie usually it's like cheeky little things like uh nick mentioned that's an easter egg and you you probably know what that is if you're listening to this but if you didn't now you do i might actually do a second instagram post for this if we keep thinking of more because this is definitely a visual thing versus mm. just like audio bits that we would include in on the episode but i know this isn't like in the little research that I've done, there's so many Easter eggs. And that's my favorite thing in looking through for movies that I can't name a single one right now off the top of my head. No, I but, felt the same way. And it's not something that you always keep in mind because you know it when you see it, but it's never registered in your head long enough to call back on it unless it's like Im like immediately topical like oh can you name a Easter egg from the Indiana Jones movies? Yes, but if I were to try to um think of like hey can you think of anything from anything else like um uh uh yeah i can't do it on command 
Disney does a lot of self-referencing of its own stuff. And it's at least in its animated movies. I feel like Pixar does too. That's like where like that Pixar one universe theory comes in because it reference itself references so often. Yeah. Which means at some point in the universe, the children of the toy story films will end up on a barren (laughs) planet. Um, to make way for Wally. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember what was it? It was the oh boy, on back when Cracked had a YouTube channel. Oh, um, After Hours. After Hours, oh, where they yeah. they discussed in depth the whole like Pixar one universe and how like Cars led to Wally, which then led to uh, something I can't remember exactly. But I was like, oh wow, that's that that tracks better than I expected. <laughs> Also, I like how now, rule of thirds, you come for the picks, but you also come for YouTube recommendations between this and the last episode. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you have, if if someone has not watched After Hours at this point, just go go right now and enjoy the next probably not seven right hours. now. Wait until the episode's done. <laughs> I mean, it's real good. It's real good. Yeah, I go pause. right now. We don't have sponsors. Just, I'm gonna, just I'm pause gonna mute it, myself and go back. watch it right now. <laughs> you have to promise to come back, though. So, um. Does anybody have an Easter egg? I can go first, unless oh. anyone is foaming at the mouth to go first. I think Nick might steal mine, so let's see. Let's just dish twenty Easter eggs because we know they all, they're all <laughs> they're all out there. So, David, you guys should say it at the same time. Then I doubt he has mine. Okay, I, I mean, went, I, I I probably went with a pick that seems obvious for Nick. So, oh yeah, no, I I went for something different. Mm. So in <laughs> um. The Tim Burton version of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mm. uh, we actually see Charlie's dad working, and he happens to be working at the Smilex factory. Smilex is the poison that the Joker put into all of the cosmetic stuff in the 1989 Batman movie. Oh. oh. Wait, is it? So there's like a, a sign outside or where do you see it? Is it like the name of the factory he, outside? Or? He he works at the factory putting like the caps on the tubes of oh, toothpaste or whatever. Oh, so the tubes say Smilex or whatever? Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. I and assume because... it's not the same compound. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but because both are directed by Tim Burton, he threw that in as a little Easter egg. Because it has no impact on the movie, it um, really has no bearing on anything else. And I mean, he still gets fired from his job regardless because the robots came in to take his job. But aside from that, it just the fact that the name of that was present, you know, is a nice little nod to some of his di- directorial past. Damn robots took her germs. Yeah, but then he gets a job fixing robots, and his life gets so much better. So much better. It's true. If if only that's what was happening now and not AI is just taking creative jobs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're those, still here, baby. <laughs> it was just like, it's like, oh, the AI is taking the jobs of writers. So then those writers are going to fix the AI. Oh, no, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is going to write Aquaman 2? <laughs> Random person on the street. <laughs> you bowl. Damn, I <laughs> bring him back. He's the only one who could defeat AI. <laughs> he can't it's predict a writing style thinking. we can't predict or understand. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes the hit niche. It's a new popular. It's an adapted story from the mind of a madman. <laughs> I think so. I only saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in the theater once. That's that's all I've saw of it. So, so I don't remember, I don't remember Char- that part of the movie. It came out, I think, my birthday or my birthday weekend. Because I remember years ago, my brother was like, you know what? Like, the new Batman movie came out. We're going to take you to go see the new Batman movie. And I was excited. I was like, Batman Begins, yes. And then we showed up too late. So it was sold out. So the only other thing that we can see was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I was very disappointed to be watching that and not Batman. That's yeah. brutal. Because that's, I mean, I I like the Charlie movie, or the Tim Burton version anyway. But to go from, I'm about to see Batman Begins to let's watch this instead. That is, ouch. Yeah, so. But you saw it eventually. I still, ne- no, I never did. 
<laughs> still hasn't. He just skipped the first one and he went straight to the Dark Knight. If it's not in theaters, then why bother? I see why you hate the Dark Knight now. Dark Knight Rises forever. Was that the Bane one? <laughs> That's the third the one. Yeah. Rises. Yeah. Oh, boy, I've thought. It's the one where he movie. breaks his back and then repairs his broken back through sheer uh, will. Rest. And yoga. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, can we have, Tim, can you and I have a podcast episode where we trash that movie? Oh boy, that movie. Dark Knight Rises? <laughs> yeah. I okay, No, he likes that the, one. I'll do that one with you. Yeah. I like Dark Knight Rises wait, better wait, than Dark you, Knight. Wait, you just made fun of the Bane one. I make fun of lots of things I love. I make fun <laughs> of me all the time. <laughs> so Yes. I do appreciate Bane's infrastructure knowledge that he's able to wire live Gotham local television to some random cave in the Middle East with amazing service as well and put I it in his jail cell just to just to add more salt to the wound for Bruce Wayne. I love that you can rob the stock market with a <laughs> USB drive and apparently there's no trace whatsoever. So if someone manages to steal your stocks, that they're gone. You're, you're and then in the very next scene, they're like, Bruce Wayne, you've been doing a lot of bad stocks. Like, didn't the stock exchange literally get robbed and like did, like, did we forget about the broad daylight stock exchange robbery? Which that's not how the stock exchange works. <laughs> where they targeted so, bruce bruce wayne's bank account it's like oh no that didn't we don't we can't trace that mm. it's probably the same police department that put away um uh what's his name sylvester stallone and demolition man where they're like oh the <laughs> building blew up and there's a bunch of hostages that you killed i'm pretty sure they were already dead but all right let's let's throw me in jail for it anyway did you guys have forensics for this no no Lock no, we can't. Ice. We can't look at the bodies and find the actual cause of death. They, they blew up. That's how they died. We we just took his word. Guys, it's the 80s. We don't do that. It's, it was the 90s. It was Demolition Man. Oh, Demolition Man was the 90s. Yeah, it was. Even worse. <laughs> so much worse. That means law and order existed by that point. Right? So they, they even had that to go by. They could have called the CSI Vegas people. <laughs> <laughs> How'd we get here? <laughs> I don't know, but by this time, I've looked at so many Easter eggs, I don't even remember which one I wanted to talk about anymore. Dean, we are stalling for our lives right now for you. <laughs> I mean, I can go. I mean, Oh, go ahead. No, yeah. but I yeah. had one, okay. and now it's gone because I just continue to look at them. And I'm like, oh, what was I going to talk about? I need to write this Sorry, down. I go on tangents, but I'm prepped. I'm, I'm curious what Dave is going to pick if you thought I was going to take it. So okay, so I my, know what it is. my pick... My pick is the 2004 movie, The Great Easter Egg Adventure. Oh. And my favorite Easter egg is the, the big Easter egg. On the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Happy uh, in the first half. Oh, I was going to say, gonna please lie. tell me that's actually what you're going to stick with. <laughs> that was my number three. I was going to say, on a side note, like that movie is really well casted. It's Brooke Shields, James Woods, Joey Pants. I have no like, idea what you're talking Nancy about. Nancy Kerrigan. Like, it's, it's, a good, it's a good cast. Um, <laughs> Nancy Kerrigan? <laughs> the ice skater? <laughs> Yeah. Huh. <laughs> it's an animated film. She has voice credits on it. This is real? I thought you were just pulling it out of thin air. No, this is a real movie. It's got, you know, freaking uh, Joey Pant uh, Pantalonio. Pantalonio, boy. Uh, <laughs> Joey Pants. Joey Pants. That's why I say yeah. Pants. The Matrix, Bound. Yeah. A bunch of stuff. Uh, James Woods, Brooke Shields. Yeah. Pete's grandmother sends him an Easter egg basket with a stuffed bunny known as Whiskers who becomes the envy of the other toys because he's taken to school and they stay home. Yeah. It's, uh, it's got a big Easter egg on it. It's my favorite. Uh, no, honestly. Um, <laughs> the one that I thought Nick was going to say and the one that kind of jumped out at me is the Easter egg from uh, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, 1999, mm -hmm. in one of the senate room scenes where you have like this massive senate with all these oh, different yeah. aliens when they're all like getting angry about a vote uh in like the corner of the screen it's a blink if you blink and you miss it but also really kind of tiny um you notice that one of the like senate uh chairs is occupied by et's race huh et people yeah, so apparently uh, E.T. exists in the Star Wars universe, and they are part of the Galactic Senate. So partially <laughs> E.T.'s fault that the Empire took over. That's a fun um, reverse Easter egg, too, because Lucas did it as like a nod back because Lucas did the Yoda thing in E.T. Mm -hmm. 
it's a it's a it was a pretty fun one and like it was definitely one of those like they do like a quick pan and it's like wait a second was that et and then you go back and it's like oh my god it was yeah that is really cool oh, wait like, didn't we establish though that et has healing powers yeah so that means I there's so, an yeah. alien race that could have saved padme there's a lot of things that could have saved padme including <laughs> better, you know better, better script writing. writing but i mean oh. <laughs> She gave up. I want to. She lost the will to live, so she died. (laughs) I want to see where ET's race are like masterful politicians and they're like slowly maneuvering their way into power. It, it reminds me of like the, blind, so. it, it's like et's race like they're in the senate they're actually incredibly intelligent it's just like that um robot chicken sketch where like you find out et is just a dummy like <laughs> all the rest of them are yeah are totally normal and can speak and like et is just like this dumb guy and they're like get out of here do you hear the sequel to et that didn't get made i think so but please refresh my memory so apparently Steven Spielberg made a horrifying sequel because he really didn't want to make the sequel. The studio was pressuring him like, look, you need to make a second script. This movie is bangbusters. It's like uh, it made a ton of money. We need to make a sequel to this. He kept saying no, he didn't want to do it. So eventually he's like, you know what? Fine, I'm going to make it. And basically, <laughs> long story short, it's like these albino aliens with huge red eyes they have fangs and they are like at war with et's race and um they come to earth and they try to conquer it and then et comes in and basically helps try to save the day and stuff but the the design of the aliens and what they were supposed to do while on earth took a it's you go from like a family friendly first film to like terminator meets aliens for the sequel (laughs) And then the studio's like, huh, yeah, um, you know what? We're good. We're uh, we're good on the just the one then. It's like, yeah, the aliens looked like E.T. They were albino mutations that have been at war that used a hypnotic hum with paralyzing effects on wildlife. They capture Elliot and company, take them hostage and interrogate them using child torture. <laughs> he really was gutting for really I do not want to make this film. Don't make me. What separates? <laughs> what if they did? <laughs> Or they loved no it. No notes. They loved Green light. It. <laughs> it's like, like the producers. Perfect. <laughs> well, it's just like, it's so funny because like the E.T. movie is is just a singular compact story. And like, while I didn't really like E.T. very much, it's like, where do you go with this? Like the, like the story is told. Like, so if you made a sequel, the only thing you really can do is just invent an entire new story. Like there's nothing to build off of there. It would, yeah, it would be more so just the characters from the first movie having a completely different adventure yeah. and not like, oh, we're, how do we extrapolate this out? It's like, Elliot's back. He is? Why? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> and then seeing... Hmm. What separates well, us from E.T.? And then the, the Universal Studios ride, if that's any kind of telltale sign of what more of what that universe would have entailed i would not have wanted a sequel with any of those weird it looked like an 80s cartoon like saturday morning cartoon beat that turned into real life and i just don't see how that would have worked because it very much reminded me of like fraggle rock or Mm. like care bear kind of feeling and it's just i don't know not for me Mm. now i want a fraggle rock feature film yeah, but there's fraggles that are albino with red eyes <laughs> that emit <laughs> hypnotic hum. And they don't eat the t- the uh, the clear tracks anymore, and the, they the torture tracks. doozers. <laughs> oh, fraggle rock. <laughs> so I I um, didn't know where we were going to go with all of that because I was trying to backtrack in my mind that we started from Star Wars. Aliens. Settle something that far off, with we? you, you two on this. Settle something. The opening crawl, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, 
does that long, long time ago mean that that happened very far from Earth in our past, chronologically? No, because it's in a galaxy far, far away. Well, yeah, because I'm thinking of the long, long time ago bit. Yeah. So it's like it's well, a galaxy it's that, far, far away. That whole, that references Earth, so it's it's a long time from when we live, yes, in our past. Yeah, I would say so. So that means the E.T. aliens eventually make those galaxies far, far away to Earth. They've already met humans for ages. So... E.T. is just a dummy. He's just, he's just a <laughs> dummy. E.T. E. <laughs> They're just like, guys, this is this is his last shot. We just got to like, put him down somewhere, see how he plays. He's just the little brother of all the aliens and just he's like the Rudy of the bunch. E.T. Yeah. E. holds a gun to Elliot. You don't know who my father is. <laughs> so I think Harrison Ford said it best, and it's just that it's, this ain't that kind of movie, kid. <laughs> So, I don't know. It's been brought up, but I never, it's, yeah, no. Um, So I can go with my next, which is actually, I think, four Easter eggs. Um, what? Originally, it's it ties together. So in the film by Wes Craven, The Hills Have Eyes, there is a shark poster on one of the walls that people think is a reference to Jaws, indicating that the Hills of Eyes is supposed to be like the scarier than Jaws or like some reference back to Steven Spielberg's Jaws. So then after Hills of Eyes, Sam Raimi decided then, I like that idea. In Evil Dead, I'm going to have a poster of the Hills of Eyes in my film referencing that we're going to be scarier than the Hills of Eyes. So then Wes Craven decides in the first Nightmare on Elm Street, Nancy is going to be watching the Evil Dead on TV when she's trying to stay awake. And so then in Evil Dead 2, when Ash goes to the uh, like wood house looking for things, they decide on the wall, they put Freddy's glove. And it's this like little continued reference, movie to movie to movie to movie, that I don't know if it ever continued past that, but I always I like love to like continued director like little nods back and forth. That's not even as like a we're better than that. It's more just like a fun little like I like this. So here, I it like almost reminds me good. of that. Um, every time a movie takes like the top box office in history, the previous one would put like an ad in the paper, like congratulating them. So like when um, E.T. beat Star Wars, you saw. Like the whole cat, like all the characters from Star Wars, like congratulating E.T. on like, hey, great job. And then like when Jurassic Park won, you know, E.T. did the same thing for Jurassic Park or something and then so on and so forth. At least that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, because I remember, yeah, it was like what the one breaking the record of the other and it was just kind of like a passing of the torch. Yeah, I appreciate that because it's like, hey, at least they're, you know able to stand next to each other and say like, Hey, this is really great. What you've done. I'm going to put it in my movie and I'm going to say it's going to be scarier and still give credit where credit's due. I appreciate that. Nowadays. I feel like they can't do the letter in the paper thing. Cause one people don't read newspapers, but also it would be like Disney writing a congratulations letter to Disney. Like <laughs> star Wars just beat Marvel. Marvel just beat star Wars it's again. That, Indiana just, Jones beat. Yeah. It would just be sick of call me. <laughs> It, no, it's that, okay. that stupid uh, Obama giving himself the metal <laughs> thing. Yeah. It's the the Aziz Ansari joke about Jay-Z buying his own vodka in the club. Writes a check, puts it in his own pocket. <laughs> it's like, thanks me. We're, we're doing it. So, yes, that's my, my daisy chain Easter egg that I always found entertaining. That's pretty cool. I figured you would have went for the Toy Story one. You figured wrong. Oh, the oh yes. So oh, in carpet? Sid's bedroom, the crazy kid. Well, not crazy kid. The deeply emotionally disturbed kid. Tim, that he's crazy kid. Had an upbringing. He yes. So uh, the <laughs> carpets in his house were the uh, the shining rug. Yeah, I thought that was a cool thing that they added. And the other shining references, or is it just the rug? What that. There was that more Woody one. kills Buzz with an axe in the uh, lobby of... <laughs> Here's Woody. 
Well, it's where Mr. Potato Head freezes to death and he has that weird face, <laughs> <laughs> facial expression. <laughs> his wife comes out, takes his mouth off, puts the other frozen mouth on. <laughs> Actually, now, now I want, <laughs> I want a, just a shining remake yeah. <laughs> that's just Mr. Potato Head as Jack and Mrs. Potato Head as um, Shelly Shelley Duvall's character. So, Dean, we have stalled as long as we possibly can. Oh, no, can. I, I found, I remember what it was. But after, anal, after this is, so I looked at a bunch of lists to try to like, because I know sometimes deep down I have a, a genuine pick, but I just have a horrible memory for that kind of stuff. So, you know, I was looking at lists and lists of things online. I'm like, what really? do I what do I connect with? What is like the one that I'm like, yes, this is mine. I didn't really find that. But I found one that I thought was entertaining. Um, and it actually connects to Nick's. Um, and it's in... I mean, I was almost going to pick this for last month's episode, the adaptations. And not because I think it's my favorite adaptation but because i just thought it'd be interesting to talk about because i love the graphic novel and it's from the watchman Zack snyder's watchman movie um one of the cool parts or positives of that movie that is a flawed but interesting movie in my opinion um are the opening credits which kind of shows you all these changes that happen oh. in this alternate universe yep um and one of them you know it's about superheroes um and in one of these little vignettes of time it shows the first night owl from like their like 1950s era punching a criminal and he's punching him in the alley and it's a reference to he's punching the criminal that kills um the waynes batman's parents because they're in the background and on the on the wall behind him it says the gotham opera house so he essentially stopped the creation of batman because he saved his parents life i don't understand why that movie gets as much hate as it does i thought it was really i don't deserve hate i just don't i just think it's there's good aspects and like not so good aspects in my opinion yeah it's like it's not a one-to-one -to, -one to the graphic novel and i think that might have irked people but I didn't read it prior to seeing the movie when it originally came out. So it's like, as just a movie by itself, I liked the movie. And that's the other part, too. I mean, I understand why they changed the, the ending. I fully get it. But in context of the whole rest of the movie, the squid thing is really stupid. And I feel if you brought and presented that movie as is people would have laughed if a giant squid landed in the middle of New York city. You know, I think it would not have worked. So to do like a mind nuke or whatever as the ending instead, I think it worked out a lot better. And even all the rest of it, you can literally read the comic and watch the movie at the same time. And you can tell that they use the comic as like storyboards because yeah. some of the shots are one-to-one. -one. I don't want to digress into the movie discussion too much but i would disagree with the squid thing based purely on the remake and i'm like it worked for me there oh the not the, the remake series the sequel. continuation yeah, yeah yeah um my, my I, I don't go my faults with the don't really lie as much as like that kind of change but just like some of the casting wasn't great and just um yeah, Zack Snyder is a great visual person, but I just, I hope he's not listening. I just wish he would be a cinematographer and or production designer <laughs> instead of directing the movies. But um, you know, he's, funny enough, he's last a really week, good visual artist. I was, um, I was doing, I had to go on a business trip. And when things kind of died down in like the control room that we were in, we were talking about movies and Zack Snyder came up and this wasn't even me saying it. But the whole rest of the room basically felt like, you know, Zack Snyder is really pretty good if he's not making his own content. <laughs> if he is taking an adaptation of something, it seems to work really well in his favor. But anything that he is directly responsible for writing and creating, not so much. I mean, I do always love the Dawn of the Dead remake. 
Like that was a fun movie. I remember that being fun. I just don't I think, think a lot of things are visually things interesting. Like Rebel Moon, Sucker Punch, a lot of things visually interesting, but yeah, I, I think sometimes the rest of it can fall flat. Yeah, I remember watching Sucker Punch and being like, wow, this like looks really cool, but uh, I don't know about anything else going on right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 300 is kind of the same way. Yeah. No, 300. 300 was huge. I mean, everyone loved that movie. When oh, it yeah. Out. No, I just mean like. I mean, uh, we, would we I rather in, watch like, 300 or Sucker Punch? In high school. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather watch 300, but um, it's still just mainly just a. Yeah, it, it looks great. And that's that. <laughs> yes. Ba -da -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> Hopefully, um, that's not what the Spartans put down on their tax. <laughs> um, uh, spell that, please. Uh, Leonidas, I I hope you have your affairs in order. You're being audited. <laughs> it would appear that you listed your profession as ooh. Ooh, <laughs> for 30 years. <laughs> so. I was just thinking, it's like, and what is this business write off where you dined in hell? <laughs> so, was that a business dinner? Did you have clients with you? Is there a literal restaurant called Hell? <laughs> business justification, sir, is not die with on your shield or, or, or come back with your shield or die on it. It's, it's one. Of, what does that mean? <laughs> We actually removed uh, the ability to, to write entertainment meals as a, as a write-off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how Xerxes buries the Spartans <laughs> in just tax evasion and paperwork. <laughs> they got him like a pwn. <laughs> that's the 300 I want to see. <laughs> the hard-hitting legal drama. 300 documents. <laughs> Uh, do all 299 of these men have W-2, sir? <laughs> it's like, and while you're over the minimum 15 employees for providing health insurance, but it doesn't seem like the care they're receiving is adequate. Uh, we're going to have to audit your, your, your insurance records. <laughs> Death and glory cannot be substituted for health insurance. Thank you. <laughs> Did some... you maintain a policy for all or some of the year? <laughs> so there's some workers' rights issues going on. I need the country <laughs> for where you're from, not just this is Sparta. <laughs> also, how does workers' comp work for professional soldiers? <laughs> I don't think it does. <laughs> I lost an eye. I'm going to gonna go see Linda in HR and file my workers' comp form. We actually have to cut this meeting short. Uh, we have a representative from OSHA here that needs to finish up. You do not have any railings around this pit. Also, why is no one wearing shirts? <laughs> you can't enforce that kind of dress code. Okay, we're done riffing on 300, the tax. <laughs> <laughs> the bureaucratic nightmare. <laughs> and with that said, we conclude our episode of most... Most Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> hey... I think David's pick had them. <laughs> Featuring the Easter egg adventure with him. <laughs> well, that said, we conclude our episode of memorable Easter eggs. Remember, you can reach us on all the big social media sites at Screen Refresh or email us at screenrefresh at gmail.com so we can hear what your top three choices would have been or any other topics you want to hear us talk about. Also, we have a Discord. We are all extremely active on there, and we'd love to talk our favorite movies, games, and whatever else might come up. So, for Tim, Nick, David, this is Dean. Please take care of yourself. Please. And you can catch us next on Screen Refresh, airing every first Monday of the month. Also, check out our sister podcast, Don't Open This Podcast, every second and fourth Monday of the month. Stay classy and... Look for Easter eggs everywhere you go. They're out there. Watching. Waiting. <laughs>
so we can hear what your top three choices would be or any other topics you'd l- <sighs> fuck i'm just gonna do this nice and slow mm. first time uh. <laughs> <laughs> bastard <laughs> 